Let's go ahead and look at some of the specifics associated with the liquid state. So most of the um, properties that we're going to talk about uh, with respect to liquids are caused by the intermolecular forces um, <clears throat> in between molecules um, of the liquid. So stuff like beating, surface tension, capillary action, um, viscosity, etc. Um, they are all directly related to these types of features associated with liquids. And um, something to remember or something to keep in mind is that basically when you have stronger intermolecular forces, that's going to cause all of these types of attractions to increase. So when we talked about our intermolecular forces, um, basically we're looking at uh, how they affect features besides the boiling a point example that we used uh, frequently uh, in the other lecture. Okay, so before we move into talking about the types of um, basically uh, liquid properties that are caused by intermolecular forces, let's look at uh, how we um, define cohesive and adhesive forces. So um, cohesive forces are intermolecular forces that bind the same molecules or the same type of molecules to each other. Okay, um, so like in the two examples here, we have a test tube full of water and a test tube full of mercury. Um, in the case of the mercury here, okay, the intermolecular forces are um, very strong between the mercury-mercury um, atoms. So uh, basically, uh, the cohesive forces here um, are very strong because the mercury and mercury are interacting. Um, we ha do have a little bit of adhesive forces between the mercury and the ga uh, glass, okay? But the cohesive forces are the ones that are occurring between the group of um, similar molecules, okay? When we come over here and we look at water, uh, we have lots of adhesive forces, okay? So the H2O, um, the polar H2O molecules uh, interact with the silicon dioxide molecules that are in the glass, um, and you have this adhesive force um, that basically uh, causes the water to interact with the surface of the uh, glass container. Okay, so um, adhesive forces are intermolecular forces that bind substances to basically like a surface or to something else other than, you know, the molecule that's the molecules that are in the container itself. Um, so uh, actually, interestingly enough, if we look at the difference between the behavior of the water versus the mercury, they're both liquids. Okay, um, we know that water forms the meniscus, right? It has this nice curvature here. Okay, but if you look at the mercury, the mercury has basically the opposite effect. It kind of has um, a curve in the opposite direction. Okay, so instead of a meniscus, we have this nice little bubble that's formed. Okay, and the reason why we have a difference uh, between these two liquids and their behavior inside these glass containers is because there's a difference between the cohesive and adhesive forces that are at work. Okay, so remember that the adhesive forces deal with basically the molecules being attracted to the surface of the container. Okay, so in this case, the silicon dioxide um, that make up the glass are basically attracted to the polar H2O molecules. Okay, and this causes this curvature that you see here. Okay, so the adhesive forces in, in the water situation are very, very strong. Okay, now the cohesive forces are strong as well, okay, but the adhesive forces here are, are um, strong enough to cause the liquid to come up the sides. On the other side, uh, we have the mercury, and obviously it has, um, doesn't have a meniscus, it has the opposite effect, basically has, you know, a curvature that forms... Um, basically a bubbling up top. And the reason why that happens is because the cohesive forces in this situation, the attractive force between the mercury and mercury atoms is stronger than the adhesive forces um, occurring between the mercury and the glass. Okay, so cohesive forces, they're intermolecular forces between similar molecules. Adhesive forces are intermolecular forces um, that basically bind a specific type of molecule to the surface. So, um, if we look at our uh, liquid properties with respect to cohesive and adhesive forces, we're going to be able to um, understand most of them pretty in a pretty straightforward way. Okay, so viscosity is how much a liquid resists um, flow. Okay, so um, you know water versus let's say molasses. Okay, we know that molasses um, has a very high viscosity; it's very thick. Okay, where water, you know, uh, the molecules just flow right past each other. Okay, um, viscosity is also related to things like oil. So we use different uh, ratings on our oil um, uh, that we put into our car. So basically, um, the lower your number, 
um, the lower your viscosity. So basically you have a, a, a oil that's going to not really resist flow. So basically it's going to pour a lot faster. Whereas if we have a oil with a higher viscosity, right, it's going to be thicker, it's going, they're going to basically pour more slowly, okay? And the reason why there's such a difference between these two is because of the intermolecular forces, okay? So basically the larger your, or stronger the intermolecular forces you have, the more viscous you're going to be, okay? So um, the oil rating with a 40 versus a 10, okay? Um, is going to have more or stronger intermolecular forces than the one with the lower rating, okay? Um, basically, because you have larger molecules, um, also large molecules can get tangled up in, with one another. Um, there can be overlap. So an example of this is basically like cyclohexane versus hexane. They both have the same number of um, carbons and hydrogens. Um, but the cyclohexane occurs in, in basically a, a ring, okay? And because it occurs in this ring, um, you end up with a molecule that's more compact and doesn't, you know, get uh, tangled up, quote-unquote, um, and subsequently uh, the intermolecular forces are going to be lower than, you know, the straight-chained uh, hexane molecule. So in this case, we're really looking at cohesive forces. That flow is going to be dictated by the intermolecular forces between um, the molecules um, themselves, not the surface. Um, so viscosity is definitely uh, looking at the cohesive forces um, of those intermolecular forces in the um, actual sample itself. Surface tension um, is also directly related to cohesive forces. Okay, so the intermolecular forces of the molecules uh, in the middle of the solution versus the one on the top um, are going to be vastly different, okay? If we think of this uh, with respect to um, the ability of this uh, atom to be attracted to all the surrounding atoms, um, the intermolecular forces are going to be weakened because they're spread out over more atoms, okay? Versus on the surface, we only have this molecule interacting with everything to the left and right and just directly below. Okay, so the intermolecular forces are going to be stronger here and subsequently going to cause, you know, sh the stronger interaction and a stronger pull. Okay, and what ends up happening is that the surface area, um, so basically, you know, that distance in between these bonds is going to be shorter than the ones that are down here in the middle. Okay, and so basically you end up with uh, a uh, smaller surface area and subsequently a space where, you know, something that's very light or has, you know, uh, ability to distribute its weight very um, nicely can, can apply a force without actually breaking the surface tension. So um, basically surface tension, it's once again referring to the strength of the intermolecular forces. Um, you're going to have stronger intermolecular forces um, between less molecules um, than between more. Uh, and that allows you to minimize that surface area. So once again, cohesive forces um, are, you know, dictating features of the liquid. Okay, beading is another great example. So, you know, we see this all the time. We wake up in the morning, there's dew on the plants outside or, you know, on our windshield that's been, you know, covered in rain -X or whatever else. Basically, um, beading is the formation of those little water droplets or, you know, liquid droplets. It doesn't really matter what kind. But, um... Basically, uh, this works uh, when you have, you know, it can be a polar or nonpolar substance, um, but basically the uh, features of the substance that is forming the bead versus the surface on which the bead is sitting have to be different. So basically, um, if we have a polar substance on a nonpolar surface, then beading can occur. So what happens is that in that case, uh, the polar and nonpolar molecules don't really want to interact with each other. Okay, so what ends up happening is the cohesive forces here between the polar and polar molecules um, become very strong, um, and you subsequently get the formation of that bead. Okay, um, there are no adhesive forces because the surface here doesn't want to interact with the polar um, molecules inside uh, the bead. And this would work if you had a nonpolar substance on a polar surface. Um, you'll see this. Uh, with different types of uh, organics and things of that sort, okay? So um, in this case, it's really cohesive forces um, as well um, that are uh, creating this uh, capability. 
So capillary action is really um, kind of dictated or predicated on the um, adhesive forces associated with um, the glass wanting to interact with um, the uh, polar mo molecules of water or, you know, the paper towel, um, the cellulose molecules wanting to interact with the polar aspects of the solution that it's picking up. Okay, so basically what happens is um, uh, your... Your liquid is attracted to the surface of the glass container, okay, um, and that attraction causes the liquid to um, come up the sides, okay. In that same way, those same adhesive forces are occurring um, here as the um, polar molecules inside that uh, liquid that you're cleaning up are attracted to the um, polar molecules or polar portions of the molecules that are inside the paper towel and it subsequently draws that liquid up into um, that surface. Okay, so um, the adhesive forces, they're connecting each other. You have, you know, this phase of liquid and then this phase of solid. They are similar molecules, um, uh, however, they are different substances. Okay, so capillary action, totally relating to the adhesive forces. Um, obviously, there are cohesive forces within the individual solutions themselves, okay, um, but the adhesive forces are what are causing the, the liquid to be drawn up the sides of the container or into the actual paper towel itself. Okay, so your adhesive and cohesive forces, um, you should be able to see now how they are um, interrelated with our intermolecular forces, okay, the concept that, you know, things have to be similar in um, polarity and things of that sort, you know, uh, to be strongly attracted to one another, um, that should be carried through, as well as the fact that, you know, these, these are all uh, characteristics of liquids that are caused by the intermolecular forces um, as they relate to adhesive and cohesive forces.